Yeah. Afternoon. Yeah. I saw Jimmy in the house of bank last week, mate. I see him as well in the gym the other day. He wasn't happy when I saw him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must have seen him after I saw him. Was a, did you tell him? <laughs> oh, I see. He knew anyway. I wouldn't have blown that secret. You know. You're not that type, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he works for the sun. <laughs> right. Okay. Good afternoon. We'll start with Gary Cottrell. Hello, Frank. Um, injury updates. I've got a list here. Tony Rudiger. Out. Any update on them? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just going to go very quickly through. Uh, no, Tony, um, I suppose it's not a laughing matter. He's, he's uh, got a recurring injury, uh, his groin area. It's not the original knee injury. Um, so we're trying to find a solution because he's still got some pain. We're hopeful it still won't be long, but I haven't got an end date for you. And uh, on, on Christensen, Andre Christensen? Uh, Andre should be okay. Yeah, he's trained with us today. He's missed most of the week, but it's uh, still a tiny bit of pain, but it's not. Hopefully not a risk, so um, she'll be in the squad. And is Olivier over his illness? Yes, yeah, he's actually been a difficult week for him because he's been, um, it was quite a strong, uh, well I say strong illness, he left him pretty weak, so he's been sort of getting a bit of strength back in it, et cetera, this week, so um, we'll touch and go to see whether he's involved tomorrow. A bugger of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, as you were, the same prognosis for Emerson and Ruben. Yeah, yeah. Emerson now is going to be the other, the other side of the international break. Uh, with uh, the hamstring injury and uh, Ruben we can't give a date but he's outside jogging slowly so that's a positive move from this week good to see him outside and uh, yeah it will, uh, we'll see how that goes over the next sort of weeks probably months but you know weeks as well obviously as you mentioned six academy players sent into the game on Wednesday uh, in terms of Rhys James uh, Callum hudson Adoy, are they in with a shout for Saturday yeah they're in the squad they're in the squad and uh, they performed well the other day um, delighted for uh, Reese to get his first goal, came to get his goal. They still have improvement, they're young players, but they've shown uh, the quality that they have. Uh, Reese, because he's been away, it's good for the home fans to see him. We know what Callum can do. So, yeah, they're, uh, now they're back fit, they're pushing. And how important is it? It's an obvious answer, I know. Uh, it'll be a bit of a silly question, but just to put it out there so you can answer it. How important is it to get your first Premier League win off the back of getting your first home win? I'm talking about yeah. That. Yeah, of, of course, every week is important and the fact that we haven't won at home in the league is something that we obviously want to correct. If we want to be where we want to be, we're going to need home wins. I um, thought we were very unlucky last week against Liverpool, but that's, uh, that doesn't help the point situation. So we need a similar performance to Liverpool because I thought it was very good. Even in the first half we matched them on, in play and the second half we were very good uh, with our urgency and how we moved the ball and uh, uh, if we get that um, level of performance, then um, I expect the home wins to come very soon. Because of the run of away games really coming up, I think one in, one in the next five after this is away. It's home, sorry, the rest yeah. Of the yeah, we've had a little run of home games, and listen, we must respect Brighton hugely because they're playing very well, playing some really good football, new manager, change of style, maybe not the points on the ball that they deserve. So we can't just because we haven't had a home win expect it, it will come because we're Chelsea and they're Brighton. No, we respect them um, and we'll try and get our win and then take on those, uh, those few away games you talk about. Stats are stats, history is history, but 100% league record against Brighton, Chelsea, and of all the teams they've ever played in their entire history, the only team they've never beaten is Chelsea. Well, <laughs> stats are stats, as you say, and uh, I don't, I've got no care. In fact, that would worry me more than a sort of in-between stat. So we have to be on our guard, you know, that 100% that record doesn't change. But as I say, each game has to be um, prepared for on its own merits and having watched a lot of Brighton. And, and know a little bit about Graham Potter from last year and how what he's done with these teams and how he plays. We have to be ready for anything. So yeah, the, the, the stats of history are not important tomorrow. Stats so you spent quite a lot of last season coming to Derby to ask you about Chelsea. Mm. Um, flipping it about really now. <laughs> coming here to ask you what if I can about Derby and the late night shenanigans and just look, see about rules were broken. Difficult I know because there's a court case, but any thoughts on that? No answer for that one. You know, no answer would be right for me here as manager here. It would have been similar last year. Asked me about Chelsea, whether I did talk a little bit or not, but I wouldn't. It shouldn't be something to talk about, especially a situation like this. So, no, not for me. Okay, John. Frank, you've seen plenty of young players come and go over the years from Chelsea. How good are this group now? They're the best you've, you've seen in the club. Well, I think the fact that we're seeing the numbers of them in the first team speaks for itself. Um, because you know, Fikayo Mason and um, and Tammy sat on the bench the other day. We saw the 
the other players, the Reese come back, Callum back from injury we saw in in, in uh, Anurin and Matson, the, the group slightly below that. So as a group, yes, um, at this moment. But um, there's still a lot of work to do for all of them. So it's, it's a nice sign. It feels nice. We're all happy at the club that we're there. But um, as always with these things, I think the step into the first team, even though it feels like the hard one, it's actually the easiest one because for me now, sustaining, improving and, and really showing at this level that you are players capable of taking Chelsea to where we want to be is the next step for all of them. So, um, they all seem comfortable as well, when they? When yeah. They can, yeah, they all seem very comfortable. And uh, again, you know, no disrespect to Grimsby, but it was a, a different game to what you know Premier League games may be. Um, so there'll be lots of things for them to learn fast. But yeah, they're, they're, they're confident lads, they're good players. Uh, they've brought, been brought up the right way in a footballing sense and I think and in a life sense, to be fair, from working with them all. So they've got every ground in and every uh, base needed. Um, now it's, it is officially up to them. We've spoken about the, the no clean sheets yet. Um, how frustrating is it that you haven't been able to feel the regular centre-back pairing? And is that the reason? No, it's not the reason. Certainly the reason is a, te is a team reason and, and I wouldn't be frustrated if we were winning every game. It wouldn't bother me. I'm not here to just protect a clean sheet record. If you win games, I'm happy with that. Uh, it's a team effect. Of course, we want to have consistency. I haven't been allowed that in terms of injury, uh, in terms of selection. Tony Rudiger obviously was a was a pretty much a, a standard pick last year until his injury. He hasn't been around at all for me really other than one game. Um, so we've been searching for that a bit, but it's, it's definitely not the reason. The reason has been different reasons individual moments across the team, set pieces, collective moments as a group um, and we, we work hard to iron them out but as I said it's, uh, it's winning games that's important rather than the clean sheet in itself. Any idea how long Rudy is going to be because that that's key isn't it for you? Yeah, I don't, unfortunately I don't know, it's, uh, it's uh, as I say an injury that's uh, ongoing. And Callum hudson do you think he's ready to play two games in, in the space of three days or have you got to be careful bringing him back? Yeah, I mean, I will be careful with uh, with Callum, considering the uh, the type of injury he had. But that's not to say he, he can't play a major part in, in tomorrow's game or a slightly lesser one. Um, well, I'll have to see him when he picked the team on its merits with a bit of Callum's personal injury situation in my mind as well and fitness. Bruce, you, you described to me now like the fact that it's a perfect storm here because of the transfer ban that you're playing the young players and they're getting their chance, but. Other clubs too are beginning to play young players and see the benefit of Arsenal in the last, last week or so, Manchester United with Mason Greenwood. Do you, do you think the footballing landscape is beginning to change now and in general clubs in the Premier League are beginning to think, well hang on, we've got some really good young players in our academies and they're, they're good enough? Maybe, maybe if you look at it in that way. I know that Arsenal have, have for a long time played young players in certain competitions and I think Manchester United are doing that and I think it's always... Oh, so it's, always, it's wise if you can do to give them minutes in games, Carabao Cup being a good opportunity at times but I'd only really want to speak for ourselves and the, the, I mentioned the perfect storm of course you can't walk away from a transfer ban but still looking at a team, a squad that has um, competition in the places that these young lads are playing so Tammy Abraham has competition in Giroud and Batshuayi Mason Mount has competition in Kovacic and Barkley and uh, N'Golo Kante and with the wingers if, he's, if you count him in that area and to, to Fikayo tomorrow a lot of people would have seen him as number four he's now number one or two as it stands so um, I picked them ahead of some senior players it's the choice of the manager and at the moment I'm, I'm going with them because they're showing me they can play and they're really playing well um, so from where I see it, age isn't the huge, the huge factor. It's a great story and we're pleased with it, but it's not the huge factor in actual selection. And tomorrow's game will mark probably the end of two months of the season already. It's flown by. Have your ambitions or aims for the season changed in any way, shape or form from what you've seen in the first couple of months? No, they haven't. Um, and, and it's always hard to give the ambitions and expectations at the beginning. It feels, you're right, I think it feels like two months, but then you look at the table and we haven't played many games, you know, and that's the way the stop start, start to the season when international break happens. So there's a long way to go. And uh, of course, there's the gap now between us and Liverpool and City, which I think a lot of people would have predicted. Um, it's come quite early for a lot of us, but then you say, well, okay, we're sitting, you look at where Manchester United and Tottenham and Arsenal and other teams around us are sitting. You know, we, we understand that we're in and amongst it. Um, and having seen the players close hand and seeing some of the way we're playing in parts of games, I'm as confident as I was before. We want to be competitive, we want to get into the top four, we want to improve daily as a team and I think we've shown a lot of signs of that now. We must keep improving on that. You don't see any reason why you shouldn't be in the top four at the end of the season though? No, of course not. I, I think um, from the way we've played and um, from the, as I say, there the are lots of moments that we've shown, I have confidence. We will we'll have to push 
because you know Leicester, because West Ham, because of all these teams, because they all invested and they spent huge amounts of money, because our investment was minus a lot of a lot of millions, nearly two hundred. Um, but we must be confident in what we have and um, and keep working. Okay, Liam. Frank, how do you think Christian Pulisic's adaptation is going like, to a new club, to a new league, but also in terms of what you're looking for from your wings? Well, it's, I said it the other day after the game, I've got four wingers to choose from now, they're all fit. And uh, Christian, I think we all forget, he's just turned 21 because of the price tag, because he comes through at a very young age. And it's very normal to expect there to be an adaptation period. Uh, and that's where he's in. He showed some really good moments, really good moments in pre-season, uh, some good moments at the start of the season. Um, but what he has to do, as all the players have to do, not just the wingers, is reach levels in training daily, daily when there's competition in the squad that make you set up and go, Here's my team selection, and that's actually affected it by seeing good stuff. And that's the same for every player in the squad. So that happens in training, that happens in game. Everyone's in the same boat. We must give Christian a bit of time to adapt because of the, the, the his youth uh, and the change of league and the change of living and all those things. We support him hugely on that, and um, his talent will come through. He, he played in some big games at Dortmund, but do you see him as sort of the same stage of his development as some of the youngsters? That are they're all they're all different. They're all different. They've all got different pathways, and uh, he had a successful time at Dortmund, and um, um, and has played in the Champions League. So we, 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 we're very aware of Christian's path when you buy him, but they're all different. Okay. Last question, Carrie. Frank, you've talked a lot about the kidology that you've used on the players. A lot of players that have really embedded them with confidence, particularly Tammy Abraham after that missed penalty and then the racism he faced. How much are you spending on the mentality of these players, and how important are the coaching team you selected and Neil Bath and assuring this progression? I think a huge part of any manager's job, but I see it as my job, is to to work with the players, not just tactically on the pitch, but in their minds, whether they're young players or older players, but you find with the younger players, of course, you want to pass on more uh, knowledge, help, whatever. Be there for them in whatever way, and sometimes it's actually being tough and being hard. That's my job to kind of sense the right moment, so I try and do that. Um, as much as I can. I think it's important. I want the players to feel that that's there. Um, so it's nice when you hear that from Tammy. And another day I might not be so nicey nicey with Tammy, and hopefully that may help. Um, but uh, I think the coaching staff that we have, uh, that I have, that we have, and I'm only as strong as them in many, many ways, um, is, is a huge part of the strength and I think a huge part of what will take us forward. And Neil Bath and Jim Fraser in the academy have got, quite rightly so, a lot of recognition this week, which has been a long time coming because their work has been going on for a lot of years. And uh, the good ethics that we, we keep touching on this season with these players coming through uh, are a huge credit to them. Um, and now myself and us as staff have to continue that good work at this level. Okay, cameras off please. Thank you.